It's literally been a decade that I've been trying to document ice off on premium still waters in the region three of British Columbia. This year, I put together some of my favorite equipment with some different aspects to recording and I finally got the start to finish procedure that I've been waiting to capture. Drones can be an amazing tool when you're videoing the outdoors, especially in wide open spaces, but they can pose extreme challenges, especially in sub-zero temperatures, and not to mention during hailstorms, rain, and sleet. During this documentation, I really wanted to experiment with GoPros using external power banks as battery sources so they could run time lapses throughout the entire day. What I did was I affixed these to tripods and ran my time lapse settings on my GoPro for one frame for every 10 seconds. Welcome to day one of a time lapse from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. As you can see, the systems are changing and the shoreline is just starting to melt away from the warmer rocks and vegetation. If you look across the lake to the left part of the screen, you can see the first bit of the still water that's opening up. Nature also seems to just wake up or get ready to move while this incredible procedure begins. Welcome to day two. It was very cool minus 10 in the evenings and the wind systems had switched slightly to north. So the development around the immediate shorelines was quite slow. But if you do look out in the main body of water of the lake during this day, you can see the front slowly approaching to mid lake. Hey you, what are you doing? <laughs> the rain had crept slowly into the forecast and there were also some sub-zero temperatures during the days but I had two lakes to monitor with one being about three days behind the other. Welcome to time lapse day three from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. This day, the systems were moving hard over a slushy, rained on ice surface, pushing southwest winds from 10 to 20, variable. This was like a bulldozer effect, as you can see. Time to move back over to lake number two. After all this rain, the lake had this weird porous broken up surface. More rain. Actually that's hail. As you can see from the rain, it almost became just slushy stagnant bodies of ice that were kind of just floating around and moving with the breeze 
from section to section, but still habitating a mass part of the lake. One of the most interesting events was, in the middle of the process, a heavy rainfall. What it had produced was large, broken up, almost football field size sections of free floating slush. And these large sections were easily moved around with even the smallest amount of breeze. We all know the old theory was always that wind does the most work, which is true. But rain sure can soften up large sections of ice, and even the slightest breeze can get things moving quickly too. Welcome to day four, six hour time lapse captured from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. I thought for sure this was the day with southwest winds from 10 to 15 kilometers per hour that the lake would be completely iced off. But as you can see, things got chalked up in the north end and were moving quite slowly. blowing like 25 southwest just tucked in behind a little ridge here but going to check the what I would believe would be the last time lapse pretty sure that this storm will clear off any of the ice that's remaining so we'll go have a boo welcome to day five complete ice off It's a beautiful thing. Thank you once again for watching. Now that we have open water, maybe a little bit more time to wait. But our next series of videos will obviously be catching.